So I just made a video and yeah. Bonjour, my name is Ting Man. For generations, people have asked me to make a collection video of every cube that I own. What they don't understand is that it takes many years to get a reservation at Le Cube Restaurant. But here we are. So why don't you join me tonight as we dine together and enjoy an assortment of every cube that I own. Bon appétit. Can we have a drink, please? Oh, thank you. The service here is great. Your cubes? Thank you. The brightest and best, the Garn Pyraminxes. They are nice, they are premium, they feel fantastic. For some reason, they haven't displaced the main Pyraminxes that I use, however. And they are these guys, the X-Men Bells, Magnetic Pyraminxes, and they feel fantastic. Interestingly, they have actually been superseded by version two of the X-Men Bells. These guys have a much more customizability, changes in magnet strength, but call me old school. I really like the version ones. Of course, my daughter likes to be different. She uses the TMS Magnetic Pyraminxes. Oh, these go back a long time. These are the Moyu Magnetic Pyraminxes. One of the very first um, that we used actually in a competition. This is the stickerless version of that Pyraminx. We have the Moyu Mailong over here, a, a new Pyraminx on the market, relatively speaking, that I don't like. Uh, and finally, the Sheng Shou Gem, really characteristic with this sort of like scratchy yet smooth feel. We'll probably see a few more Sheng Shou Gems as this dinner progresses. A skew or two? Thank you. The Scubes. Let's start with the most expensive of the bunch again, uh, the Gans Cube. This guy also, new to the market, just like the Pyraminx was, very nice. Interestingly, again, it did not displace my Scube of choice. And it's this, the X-Men Wingy. There's something about these X-Men Cubes that I really, really like. Um, it could be the fact that they are concave. Something about their shape just makes it a little bit easier because a lot of the turns on the scoop sort of go like that. And it's just really nice when you can have that concave feel to it. It just makes turning a little bit easier. The scoop of choice that my daughter uses is these guys. As you can see, they have a really characteristic look. Not concave, but instead they have a bit of a circular depression in the middle. And finally, the Houston Little Magic Scube. These guys are great entries into the Scubiverse for people who are just trying out Scube and just want to see what it's like. These are recommended. Oh, I'm filling up with the appetizers already, but we do have plenty more to go. What do we have next? Oh, the square ones, the beautiful square ones. Not too long ago, I would have had no idea what to do with these guys, but I did recently make a square one tutorial, which you can check out after this. Here are two a bit more novelty square ones. This is one of carbon fiber stickering. Not very practical to use, but very pretty. Uh, and this is from the tea jelly cube collection. We used these in that uh, jelly video that you might've seen recently where this entire cube was full of jelly. It's really nice how this square one sometimes substitutes black um, for yellow. This is the X-Men uh, Vault square one. A really, really nice square one that I first started using, but more recently it is actually the use in little magic magnetic square ones that I much prefer. You can get this in a black variant as well. These guys are just fast and yet really stable. You can feel the magnetic strength on them. And these are the ones that my daughter and I now use by choice. They are fantastic. Hands down, my recommendation if you are entering the world of the square one. What's this? Ah, uh, of course. Today's video is sponsored by Daily Puzzles. Virtually every single puzzle that you see today can be bought from Daily Puzzles. And if you use code TINGMAN, you're gonna get a sweet discount. Great products, great shipping, great discounts. All round great store. Mega Mixes, sir? Thank you, the Mega Mixes. Once again, I did a big Mega Minx comparison video previously, but here they all are. This is the T um, T Heng S, I believe. This is the Yusin Little Magic. These are both Moyu Mega Minxes. Uh, this one's one from history, the history books, the Al Hun. Uh, and this is the more recent WRM, which was meant to be their flagship Mega Minx. And to me, hey, they tried hard. They aimed for the stars and unfortunately they missed. Both of these are the MFJS uh, Mega Minxes. This one's in that, that nice carbon fiber um, decal. Uh, this one's just a stickerless. Uh, this is another Sheng Shou gem that you can tell from its characteristic sort of um, texture. It doesn't have any grooves or any weird things on its surface and yet it's a really, really nice uh, Mega Minx. 
Uh, and then we get to our Mega Minxes with magnets in them. They are so much nicer when they have magnets. This is the Sheng Show Mr. M. My daughter loves this Mega Minx. It's a very, very pretty, cute looking Mega Minx. Uh, this is the YJ Yuhu. I personally love this Mega Minx. It's really, really nice. Um, also very, very budget, like a great entry uh, into the Mega Minx world if that's all that you want to try out. This is the X-Men Galaxy um, Mega Minx. It's got a really interesting concave um, shape compared to all of the others, which I actually don't mind too much. This is a Cyclone Boys a Mega Minx. This is the uh, MGC Mega Minx, was the very first magnetic Mega Minx that I owned and I really, really liked it. This is uh, one of the newest Mega Minxes on the market. This is the Diane um, V2 Magnetic. It is unbelievably light. Feels like one of those that you can do one-handed. And it would probably be the one that I would use if not for the fact that the Garden Mega Minx exists. This guy costs as much as like half of the Mega Minxes that you see here combined, but it is fantastic. If you're enjoying this dining experience, please consider subscribing to be invited to more dinner parties like these. Whew, this is a few more than I thought that I owned, but I don't believe I have too many more cubes, so hopefully I'm not gonna get too full uh, at Le Cube Restaurant. Oh, thank you very much. Oh, the two by twos. The service here used to be better. So many two by twos, where do we even begin? I find that for the two by two, even though magnets do make a difference, they actually of all the puzzles are probably the most forgiving. Like you can actually still get some pretty good times even without magnetic two by twos. This is uh, a Maylong two by two, a really, really budget two by two. That's a great entry, but personally there are better ones for the same price. For example, the TMS two by two, that's a really, really nice one. Uh, this is the Macaron series. Like they actually made this bunch of like, bit more of a pastel color, which I don't actually mind. They're quite pretty. Uh, nice little carbon fiber two by two that I own. Uh, this is another um, really budget. I think this was the, the cubing classroom entry into the two by two series. Uh, some of our Morfunka two by twos, which used to be my main a little while ago, but more recently a whole bunch of new two by twos have entered the market. Uh, the Houston Little Magic two by two, which feels remarkably like all of the other Houston Little Magic cubes. There's something about the way that they use their plastic and it just all feels exactly the same. Uh, the Volk two by two. This guy has been used to break like world records and stuff. It's a remarkable 2x2. This is um, the older MGC 2x2. A really, really lovely 2x2, but it's been, since been superseded by the MGC Elite. My daughter loves these and she uses these as her main. And then finally, look at this, this beautiful assortment. Um, <laughs> this is the new Gun uh, RSC. This was actually originally Rubik's collaboration uh, with Gun, making a, a sort of like a speedy 2x2. Uh, but if you're really going down the route of Gun, then you want to get these guys. These are the 251Ms and I love them. They're definitely hands down my favorite two by two of the bunch. Uh, and despite the fact that I like both variants, the stickerless and the stickered version, this is the one that I usually go for. It's got a weird hollow sound to it, but it's a really, really nice two by two to use. I just wish I was good at two by two. That's a lot of cubes. You might, you might actually say that's uh, two by two too many. <laughs> good thing I've got a large table. I don't think I'm gonna run out of space. What a platter. Slightly embarrassing. I wish I could say these are all of the three by threes that I own, but this is actually all the three by threes I own of one brand. Yes, I am a Garn fanboy. I will happily admit that, but for great reason. These are fantastic cubes. I'll see if I can start from old to new. These are the Air SMs, um, a non-magnetic and a magnetic version. They're only stickered Garn cubes that I have. They're really, really nice. Felix Zemdex has broken a bunch of records with this cube. It's incredible. Uh, this is similar to that Garn cube from before. It's a tiled uh, three by three that was previously a Rubik's collaboration uh, with Garn. And it's got a weird sort of like soft feel to it. Uh, a nice cube to use. It's not magnetic though, so not one that I would use in competition. So this little guy over here would be the 354M, a 54 millimeter cube. Really, really nice for one-handed op operation. The rest are 56 millimeters. And they're not a lot bigger, but the slight size decrease does actually count. These four over here, uh, the GAN 356X. I had a bunch of these and they were my main for a very, very long time. A weird thing about GAN cubes is that their logos used to like, sort of scratch out quite easily. Uh, this is one of the WCA World Championships from 2019 sticker, the logo on it. It's, that was a great competition. That was really, really nice. And then for quite a long time, I started to use um, the 356M. They were, they suddenly became my cube of choice. Even though they were like one level down uh, from the X, the M's, and they still are really, really, really nice three by three. Uh, these three here are the XS's, really characteristic magnet that you can sort of just change the strength just by adjusting that little bit right there. And then finally, uh, TNL cubing roasts me pretty commonly for having too many cubes. I always tell him that he's wrong, but 
These five cubes here are all the um, GAN 11M Pro. I know a man only needs one of them and I have four. These two are the regular frosted versions. This is frosted with a black internal. Um, this is the UV coated version, which I've actually really taken a liking to. The shininess is really nice. This is the soft version. And this is the special limited edition purple version, which I leave in its case because I don't want to touch it too much. It's just really, really cool. It's got a really cool like red internal bit to it as well. Yeah, I know I could put stickers on this, but it's just so nice when it's stickerless. It's like a purple force cube. Of fruit? Ah, uh, um, maybe a little bit later. Thank you. They're a bit intense with this and this over here. <laughs> These, I believe, are the rest of my magnetic 3x3s. This is um, one of the new T um, mini 3x3s that just came out recently. Another mini cube that I had considered was the mini vault. I've got a few MFJS cubes over here. Some of these would be the Maylong, some of these would be on um, the RS3M. That's the RS3M right there. I really, really like that cube. It has a bit of a weird plasticky sound to it, but it's a great budget cube. Uncle Ting Man really, really likes this one. It's actually my go-to cube when people ask me uh, about like which first cube they should get. This is the T Thunderclap, a really, really nice cube that I once gave 50 away. This is a YJ budget magnetic cube. These are the Moyu GTS 3Ms, uh, which for a very long time were my daughter's mains. They are large and these ridges on the side make them even larger. For ages, people kept asking me to give her smaller cubes, uh, but she loved them and she refused to use anything smaller than that. Don't blame her, they're really, really nice cubes. Her cube of choice at the moment are actually the Volks. So this is the predecessor, the Volk Power M, a heavy cube, but a really, really nice cube that a lot of people, for example, Matt's Volk himself, um, used to use. Uh, but right now she uses um, the Volk Elites. These are the two stickerless versions and one stickered version. Here are three cubes that I modified a little while ago so that I could use them for blind solving uh, because when you solve cubes blindfold, they're not allowed to have any logos on them. Ooh, I believe this is the GTS 2M, and I think this is the Volk Power M sticker version, and this might be another GTS 2M. We'll never know now. The Maylong Magnetic 3x3, um, the Dian 3x3, the Houston Little Magic 3x3, the TMS Magnetic, this is the TUAM. This is uh, the MGC Elite. It had a really beautiful like golden M in the middle that has since disappeared. This is the Sangso Mr. M magnetic. And finally the Diane, uh, more recent uh, cube that came out. It is incredibly quiet. It's a really, really nice cube to use. Also a 34 millimeter cube, so really nice for one handed as well. And I believe those are all my magnetic cubes. This is getting a little bit bigger than I thought, but oh, oh, hello. Thank you. <laughs> uh, there aren't too many more, right? Uh, this is the 3x3 macaron cube, very, very nice. Oh, my force cubes! Made a whole video out of this uh, where my daughter tried to steal the limelight. Here are my six force cubes that I made. That was really, really fun. Check out that video after this if you like. And these are all Monster Go cubes. Why do I have so many? Because there are so many different types. These are the Monster Go cubes that only have one layer. So it just teaches you, you know, the cross and the corners for that first layer. Uh, these are the ones with only one side. They're very pretty. So the pink ones and blue ones. Uh, we've got this one that I think is called the rainbow cube or something. Definitely not rainbow colored, but I guess I get what they're saying with the stripes. And then finally, just like regular uh, Monster Go cubes. Way cheaper, by the way, than like Gan cubes, even though Gan actually owns the Monster Cube brand. And two of these are magnetic. Pretty high quality wood. Oh, the wonderful world of the 4x4s. It is a Gan 460. I stand by the fact that this was a great cube, even though everyone roasts me for it. Okay, it was a good cube for its time. There are better ones now, but I believe in you, Gan. If you make another 4x4, I will get it. I promise I will get it. This is YJ's mini 4x4 that came out recently, and it's now my daughter's uh, 4x4 main. This is the TMS Magnetic 4x4, the largest of, of the group over here. This is using Little Magic 4x4. This is the Volk 4M, uh, which I started using for uh, blind solving. This is the 4x4 Maylong. Uh, this is a YJ 4x4, all magnetic. This 4x4 used to be my daughter's main. And then finally we have the YJ MGC 4x4s, which a lot of serious 4x4 solvers use now. And they are my mains as well. I really love this 4x4. I can't get enough of it. I highly recommend them to you as well. Oh boy. These are the 5x5s. A 5x5 jelly cube. The Houston Little Magic 5x5. 
Uh, and this is a Usins flagship 5x5 actually, which I once reviewed in a pantry. This is the TMS Magnetic 5x5, exceptionally cheap. Uh, and yet really, really high in quality as well. This is the very first magnetic 5x5 that I got and I liked it for a really long time. These are two mini 5x5s that are actually the size of a standard 4x4. In fact, it's even smaller than this 4x4. And so this is the one that uh, my daughter now uses as a 5x5 main. This is the Maylong 5x5. This is a YJ 5x5, also a great budget one. Oh, the MGC5, a really, really great cube, which would probably be my main, if not for the fact that the Volk 5M exists. Hands down, the best 5x5 there is, in my opinion. I really like them. Incredible corner cutting. It's really hard to be able to make a large cube able to corner cut. And yeah, it's the most forgiving with my turning style. And ah, oh, this guy. <laughs> I don't even know what the brand of this 5x5 is, but this was the very, very first 5x5 that I ever solved. I think it took me like a day. Ah, uh, great memories. Also, what's up with the color scheme? Like, purple? Let's just make a bit more space for these. Oh yeah, thank you. 6x6? Six 7x7? Six, seven seven. Oh, thank you very much. That's very nice, thank you. Oh, is there any way that you could maybe clear um, some of these so that we have a bit more space? Did I say something? The X-Men Shadow 6x6 version one. A lot of people like it. I don't fancy it all that much. The Use of Little Magic 6x6. Again, unbelievable price that it can even exist. And the MGC 6x6. This would be the one that I recommend. Really, really nice. These are all magnetic 6x6s, by the way. I reckon that when you get up to like the bigger sizes, magnetic cubes are the way to go. They just make turning so much more easy. And because they're pretty long solves, you just want something that can turn comfortably. And finally, of the competitive N by N cubes, I've got the 7 by 7. This is the T Spark. Oh, I still really, really like it. This used to be my main. Over here, I have um, the Uchuang, I think it's called. It is a heavy, hefty 7 by 7. Um, and unfortunately not really used very much anymore. This is the Hay 7M, named after Kevin Hay, still an incredible uh, big cube solver. Yeah, it's really, really nice, but the MGC7 is gonna be my choice again. MGC7 and MGC6 are the way to go, uh, in my opinion, when it comes um, to the big cubes. This is some of our favorites. <gasps> Whoa. Yes, the technological cubes, the electronic cubes, my friends. This is the Geiger cube, one of the very first Bluetooth cubes that I ever got. Um, by Bluetooth, it means that these can connect to like a phone or a tablet and you can actually see it turning in real time. It'll time your solves and everything through that. It's really, really cool. Uh, and then we've got the Go cube, also a really, really nice cube. This guy lights up, which is one thing I really appreciate about, about it. It is pillowed, so it feels quite different from the others, but in terms of like a fun, even like educational toy, you can't go past this guy. We've got the Rubik's Connected, uh, which is the cheapest of the bunch, but it's still really, really great. Uh, and one great example, as I said before, of like how far Rubik's has come. A fantastic cube. And then we've got the gun uh, 356 eyes. This is version one and this is version two. Probably the most like luxurious elite out of the bunch. The ones that I recommend, uh, but also the most expensive. And finally, the Rubik's Revolution. This one. Press blue to play light speed. This one talks and you can't turn it. It's a bit more of like a push button game, but hey, it's part of my electronic cube collection. So there it is. Uh, next up, we've got a few other small cubes. Here's a uh, we have personal favorite. This is the use in 17 by 17. This is a big boy. Not only is it a massive cube by many, many metrics, but it's also very, very heavy. I have not actually been bold enough to try and solve this in one sitting before. I've done nice patterns to it. Actually, my son did this pattern to it, but otherwise, yeah. If you're looking for a cube that's sort of fun to solve, it wouldn't be this guy, but if you're looking for a cube that looks impressive that you can have on your mantle, that people come and go, there's a person who has a good taste in cubes. This is the one you wanna get. Oh, once again, Daily Puzzles, The Real McCoy, sponsor of this video. <laughs> Look at this. Oh, these are our tactile cubes. Ones that can be solved mostly by touch, actually. Um, so this is the dice cube. Well, it doesn't really go up to six. You've got some weird shapes over there, but all of the little dots are actually indented. And so you can feel them. Man, they are not easy to feel. <laughs> I actually haven't tried solving this one just by feel. This would be even harder. This is like the Braille cube, uh, where each of these, I believe, represent like a number or a letter or something. Really, really cool. These are far, far easier. Uh, these are the blind cubes, uh, and the differences on each side are much more pronounced. We've got like completely flat, but then we've got like um, circular, square, 
stars, hearts, and then this one with like these little spikes all around that, that's really, really easy to feel. My fastest time is like just under two minutes doing it with eyes completely closed. But yeah, they're really fun. This was one that I got from, I think Australia Geographic, like, you know, a Mensa cube, um, it calls itself, um, that is similar to these guys, except it doesn't turn as well. And also these spikes are really spiky. Like by the time I'm done, my fingers actually hurt <laughs> because it just hurts to use. And finally, yeah. This is not one actually that you can do just by feel, unless you can feel Lego colors. Uh, but yeah, my son really, really likes this one uh, for obvious reasons. Uh, it came actually completely like blank, like it came just, you know, black. And then you actually put the Lego pieces on. They don't call it Lego, of course, because it's, uh, you know, a branding issue. But the Lego pieces... You know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna choose to leave them on. It's not because I'm not strong enough. I'm just choosing to leave those squares on because reasons. Whew. I really thought that was all the 3 by 3s I had, but hey, there are more. Let's get into it. This is a Sudoku 3 by 3 Frustratingly hard. This is a Shengshou Jam. Again, the characteristic um, surface. This is a Duncan cube that I got from a toy store. It, it called itself a speed cube. And so I decided to give it a try. And it's like, yeah, I guess it's pretty good compared to like cheap gimmicky cubes. But I mean like, you can do so much better. Oh, I've got a few like really cheap introductory budget cubes that I got for my cubing club when we were first starting out. Uh, so I think they were like TE sales uh, for a lot of them. Oh, the timer cube. This was such a clever idea to have like one piece with a, a built-in screen and timer. So you could press start, solve the cube, press stop, and then you know your exact time. Really clever all-in-one solution. But the thing is, it's pretty small. And also like when you finish solving it, you've got to like find where that piece is to press stop. It's, it's not very common when I'm solving a cube that I don't have a timer or my phone on me anyway. And so I like the idea, but didn't really catch on. Uh, a bunch of carbon fiber cubes. They look very, very pretty. Uh, a Sengso budget three by three that is by far the noisiest cube I own. It's almost like they intentionally tried to make it extra noisy. This is a fidget spinner three by three that doesn't even spin because the center cap dropped off and I cannot find it. The one thing that makes it distinct and it doesn't work. Uh, one of my very, very first speed cubes that I got with a sort of like white interior that just sort of look really cool. Oh, memories. This is my daughter Ola's very first cube that she solved. She loved it because of the sort of pastel colors and the pink. The very first time she solved the cube from start to finish, it was with this one. I think it was a four minute solve. Uh, so many memories with this special cube. Here's a cute little pillowed cube. Uh, this is a Yusin Kylin V2M that's sort of like transparent. Speaking of the Yusin Kylin V2M, this guy, you recognize it? It's missing a center cap and it's because it was glued um, onto this like GoPro rig because this is the cube from One Cube Many Cubers. It's the one touched by all those like super famous speed cubers. It currently has a Nintendo Wii um, strap sticking out of it and that's because it was then repurposed and used for my skydiving video. Sorry, indoor skydiving. Maybe I should do this with real skydiving. <gasps> but yeah, this cube has seen the rounds. It's a pretty significant cube in my collection then. This is a transparent cube that's really, really fun to solve. It's a little bit hard to see the colors. <gasps> the origami cube. Oh, I had a whole video on this. This was like a 20 hour build, um, literally made from paper and magnets and a bit of sticky tape. 27 individual cubes that hold together by magnets and so you can turn an entire layer just really, really carefully. This is a pretty special cube in my collection. This is the Speed Cube Shop Halloween Cube, which I just had to get because it's going in the dark. And finally, the Rubik's branded cubes. Despite all of these being like Rubik's cubes, these are the real Rubik's cubes. And so we have the Rubik's Neon Pop. We have the Rubik's Metallic Cube. I love this cube. I honestly think it's one of the prettiest cubes in my entire collection. Very Christmassy. And I've got the Rubik's 4x4, which is, um, yeah. Cool, iconic, not recommended. I mean, look at its size compared to that. Right? It's like, what is going on, buddy? You can be more compact. You know you can. And then the actual Rubik's Cubes. This was the first Rubik's Cube that I have. It's a little bit stiff now, um, but you know, it's got history to it. And these are more recent Rubik's Cubes. This one I got for free, actually, at the um, WCA World Championships in 2019. Yeah, they've come such a long way, Rubik's. Their cubes are a lot nicer to solve now. Uh, and this guy, oh, this was bought by a friend who went to France and apparently got this from the Louvre. You've got the Mona Lisa. He's a painting by Botticelli. I don't actually know who he is. I just read this thingy and yeah, makes me sound cultured. While we wait, uh, have you heard about the joke about the dog? <laughs> there was this dog that came out and he was like, oh.
Ah, I've got cubes of lots of different sizes. Starting from the bottom, this is the 30 centimeter cube. I actually brought this up a mountain once because what else do you do with a big cube? This is an 18 centimeter cube, which is too tiny compared to this guy, but it's, you know, a, a big boy on, on its own. This is the Rubik's light cube. This looks like a completely ordinary cube, but it's actually a pretty large cube as well. Oh, no, the Louvre. Aha, as you can tell, it's a lot, it's a lot larger than, you know, one of these little guys. And then finally, <laughs> the smallest cube in my collection. This guy is a two centimeter, the little bread cube that my daughter thinks actually looks like a loaf of bread, but she's wrong, as she usually is. Where do I even put this? Oh, thank you very much. The Geo Cubes. These guys are so cool. I started out with just this guy because I was like, yeah, this will be easy to solve. It literally looks like someone bit a chunk out of a Rubik's Cube. As I tried to solve it, I realized that these others aren't too bad either. So check this guy out, right? This guy's like four pieces missing. This guy has this whole section. It's like an L shape. It's so great. And this guy's the coolest one of all. It's just this like Mobius strip type like cube. It is so, so great. And that brings us to the end of... Bon appétit. Oh. At last. 2.0. I don't have too many more of these, do I? Um, okay. These are Void Cubes. This is a Rubik's brand Void Cube with a really super weird color scheme. It has no white. It's just red and orange next to each other because why not? And a Void Cube, which I tried to do in my giving my enemy money uh, video and completely failed. This is the Horned Cube. After solving this for a little while, it makes regular 3x3s feel like pillowed cubes. This is the T6 Spot Cube. This is the Rex Cube, which I recently did in my 18 puzzle unboxing. This is that beautiful puzzle by Greg. This is the multi cube that's like a triple uh, puzzle you've got like two cubes on the outside pretty much and then this little three by three on the inside it's actually a dino cube let's see how fast i can name these guys penrose cube dino cube windmill cube polaris cube dna cube dna concave cube iv cube this is actually a scube mod it looks really cool when it's solved but once you start scrambling it it just completely shape shifts it's so so fantastic it's so cool when you see stuff like that i have no idea what this guy is called a stickless windmill cube this is a fluffy cube. It is the weirdest name for it because what's fluffy about it? It's even sharp. This is the skew mod where the centers can actually rotate like that. It is, <laughs> it is insane. I've done one side and that's pretty much it. This looks just like a skew, but there's colors on the inside. It's a bit like one of those double skew puzzles. This is a three by three mod. This is a ready cube that's currently got this annoying little corner parody. This funny twisty thing is called a copter cube, maybe because, I don't know, it flies. This is the evil eyes cube. No idea why, maybe because of that, but it's essentially just an ivy cube with like a little thing in it and suddenly it's all evil and stuff. And finally, these are the bandaged cubes. Oh, these are really, really fun to try and solve. I say try because, so they're called bandaged cubes because as you can see this whole section is like bandaged together, stuck together. You can literally make this yourself if you just like stick parts of a cube together. And if you do it when it's solved and then scramble it up, it clearly can be solved because it started that way. This guy's a lot easier because these three layers can move and this guy is near impossible. Like even to start out with, like not many layers can move. The only way I've ever solved this is by pulling it apart and putting it back together again. Sorry. Okay, we have to be done now, right? No one man should own this many cubes. Just some more. These are the dimension cubes. Uh, which my daughter made an entire video on. They're just a regular IV cube, scube, 4x4, 5x5, pyramids, 2x2 and 3x3, except they've got a really cool texture to them and also they look like they come from a different dimension. Ooh! And now we are done. Thank you. This is another one layer trainer cube that I don't know if it was ever released. <laughs> this is like this spherical 3x3 mod. I actually really like it. There's a video somewhere of Felix doing this in like under 10 seconds, which is like, I can't even solve a three by three in under 10 seconds normally. So here's my collection of slightly larger three by threes. For comparison's sake, this is our normal size. So this guy, I think is maybe like six centimeters, a little bit hard to turn. Uh, this guy is a little bigger than me, like six and a half, but like, yeah, much, much smoother to turn. But hats off to the T big cubes. These are nine centimeter cubes. It just feels so weird to hold it, but man, it turns surprisingly fast. But yeah, I really like, like these guys. They are a fun addition in like any cubing collection. We have to be nearing the end now. Okay. <laughs> uh, 
This is the so-called world's smallest Rubik's Cube. Not only is it not the smallest, it is also frustratingly hard to turn. A good workman shouldn't blame his tools, but this was the reason why I lost to my daughter in that small cube challenge. I just could not solve this guy fast enough. As you can see, it's not even as small as this two centimeter bread cube. World's smallest Rubik's Cube. Marketing ploy. That worked because I bought it. <sighs> okay. I'm... Oh. oh my goodness. Two for the price of one. Let's start with these minxes. Uh, this is the ready minx, a close relative of the ready cube. And you can see from the way that it turns, ta-da, that it's basically based off the same principle. The ready minx is only marginally harder to solve than the ready cube. They're both very, very fun puzzles um, to do. These are both kilo minxes, uh, step down from the mega minx. So as you can see, the mega minx, you can sort of think of as like a three by three. And these kilo minxes are like a two by two version of that. But then you can take a step up and get to the Gigaminx and the Terraminx. This is the Shengshou Gigaminx. That's essentially like a five by five Megaminx. And then the seven by seven. Oh my goodness. I have not even tried to solve this guy. I've scrambled this guy and given it a go before, but I have not tried to solve this guy just because of time. If you think that's it, by the way, there is more. This guy can go up in size to like the Petaminx and the Examinx. It's pretty crazy. And then over here, we have the Mirror Blocks. They're called the mirror blocks, I guess because of, you know, these guys that are like mirrored. But I mean like, these are sort of like mirror blocks as well, even though they're not mirrored. But anyway, this is the Rubik's brand one. That's the only one that's like colored, so this one's a lot easier to solve than the others. This one has a bit of a pattern to it as well. My mom actually got me this. She was like, oh, I'm, I'm really sorry, you probably already have this cube. And I didn't, so thanks mom. Hi mom. I think I've solved it once, which was uh, surprisingly hard. And I was like, all right, let's just leave it. Uh, here's our two by two mirror block. You can solve these guys with a color scheme because their shape dictates that they can only you know, turn certain ways. And the three by three. A lot of people reckon that these could actually be like official WCA like events because people practice them a lot uh, and get really, really good at them. Yeah, maybe. I would recommend these in your collection as well. It'd be safe to say that I'm getting a little bit full. Oh, 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 oh yes. Let's clear some room for these boys. The Moyu 15 by 15. This was the first big cube that I ever got. There's something about it that's just really, really hardy. Something about this big cube just gives me this like real peace of mind when I'm turning it They're like, yeah, this is safe. I can actually go pretty fast with it. It's also really compact 15 by 15. The 17 that I looked at before by comparison, I mean, this is only like two pieces wider than that. And look at the size difference. This is what I was talking about with this being like an impressive looking cube, but not very fun to solve. This one is way more fun to solve because you can essentially hold it in your hands. And this, the famous 19 by 19. This is the one that I solved in a live stream where I raised uh, over $8,000 for Mission Australia. Thank you so much if you um, supported me with that. But this is the world's current largest N by N cube. There are a lot of rumors of bigger ones coming out like, uh, you know, 21 or 23 by 23. This took me, what, what was it? Like five hours to solve. It was a tiring saw, but it was very fulfilling when it was completely done. Biggest cube that I own in terms of how many pieces it has and yeah, it will always have a special place in my heart. Oh, thank you. This is the Rubik's Orbit that despite looking crazy, is actually a two by two. And you can see it's a two by two if you look at it top down, for example, red, red, white, orange, this way white, orange, yellow, yellow. And you can solve it just like you would solve a two by two cube. The only thing I find a little bit annoying about this is that it doesn't really follow the conventional color scheme, which makes it a little bit hard. And the time machine cube. This as well is a two by two, as you can see, a two by two mod. But the extra level of challenge uh, comes with these, these wheels being able to turn. So you can turn that, rotate that slightly, and then move back. And then now you've got like increasing complexity as all these little pieces go all around. Thank you. And that brings us to the end of those puzzles. Thank you very much. Sorry, but am I going to have to pay for all this? The answer is no, because of our sponsor, Daily Puzzles. We get now to our cubes that look a lot like pyraminxes. I was so much younger when I looked at these pyraminxes. So these two, for example, are master pyraminxes. Um, they are one step bigger than this. This is sort of like three going along and this has four. They are actually really, really fun to solve. If you know how to solve a pyraminx, this is a lot harder than that. These guys, this is a pyramorphix. It looks so innocent, right? And then when you turn it, you're like, okay, wait, what's happening? And you turn it again and you're like, okay, I have entered crazy town. Uh-oh, what have I done? 
there we go. These bring back annoying memories of when I was trying to make those force cubes and my daughter kept hijacking the video with all of these weird pyramid shaped cubes. So this is the methods try a bit, I think it's called. Every time that you turn one of the tips, it brings the center along with it. So you just have to be a bit clever with how you solve it, but it's actually quite easy to do. We've got the coin pyramids that where the tips turn and then that bit, that circle in the middle turns. So you've just got some um, additional complexity there. We have got the petal pyramids, which <sighs> enough said. We have got two Rubik's triamids. <laughs> when I made a video about it, I just like, dismantle the entire thing and then put it back together. I thought that was the puzzle, but I've been told that it actually can be turned by removing a whole layer, spinning it around. I guess a little bit easy, similar to my, my origami cube from before, but yeah. This is a DNA pyraminx. This is, I didn't even know I had this. Are you guys just bringing me random puzzles? And both of these are master morphixes. So this is a three by three master morphix. This was also my downfall when I made that video where I had to give TNL queuing money because I couldn't solve this in time. But yeah, believe it or not, this is a three by three mod. If you look at it down this way, you can see it actually just turns just like a three by three would. And this monster is a seven by seven version of this. And you see that five by five grid in the middle? It is essentially a seven by seven. It makes the prettiest patterns. Like it's unreal to see what it looks like. Thank you. Top secret cubes. Top secret. Oh. I have here 13 Yusin Kylin V2Ms. Why do I have so many of the same cubes? Sorry, I should keep my voice down because these are cubes that I use in blind solving. <laughs> I recognize a few of these cubes very well because yeah, they're ones that I'll, I'll scramble, memorize the scramble, put this down and then solve just like this. Nailed it. Oops. You get the point. Uh, the reason why I have so many is because I even got into multi-blind solving where I would try and memorize a whole bunch at a time. I've never successfully gotten more than eight, but hey, one can hope. Oh, I'm, I'm getting very full. I hope this isn't too big. Oh, it isn't. Thank you. These are the tiny cubes, the little cubes. These are the GAN 330s. I think I've got a few that are unboxed uh, over here. They are really, really nice turning small cubes. Small cubes notoriously are quite hard to turn, but they have nailed it. Like these are really, really nice to turn. A lot of these small cubes are from like keychain cubes, so they can hang from bags and stuff like that. So these are a couple of keychain cubes from TE. Another TE um, Pyraminx. This is a Rubik's keychain cube. This is an IV keychain cube. It's really, really cool. This this is a mini Penrose, mini two by two, a mini um, pie cube, a mini Pyraminx. Oh, I forgot I had this, like a baby version of the little sphere cube. Let's find your mummy. Where is your mummy? Your mummy, I found your mummy. You have been reunited. Mini three by three, a larger bread cube. And finally, are you ready for this? What am I doing with my life? I am terrible with cuboids, but this is a two by two by three. This is a three by three by two. They apparently have very, very easy algorithms to learn that will allow you to solve them. And I just don't know them. But look at these guys. I've got here a two by two by four. The crazy thing about this guy is that it can shape shift. So look at that. Oh my goodness. Like we get into weird territory here. And then over here, a three by three by four which I've tried really, really hard to solve. And you can see how successful I've been. And finally, a three by three by five. Really interesting puzzles. And I'm sort of running out of space. It has to be dessert now, right? Gear cubes. These are our cubic gear cubes. This is um, a spherical, but it's three, still a three by three uh, gear cube. Um, and this is our pyramid shaped gear cube that you would think turns like that, but actually turns like that. It's really, really insane. And this guy, I got roasted in a previous video for trying to turn it like that and going like, oh, that's really weird. And until people said, hey, you can do this. Look, it turns out. And then you can turn this part individually before you put it back in. Gear cubes are really interesting because based on the number of like teeth the gears have, it sort of dictates like how many times you need to turn it before it goes back into like a, a state again. And then over here, we have our cylindrical cubes. <laughs> These are corn cubes uh, because they look like little cups of corn. Got a couple of barrel cubes. This is like an octagonal barrel cube. Ooh, a barrel gear cube. 
Very, very nice. These actually come from McDonald's Happy Meal toys. They're essentially the exact same puzzle. This one's just hexagonal in shape and this one's cylindrical. This is the barrel ready minx. So just like its cousin, uh, the ready minx and the ready cube. This is based off the same structure as well. Let's put you guys together as a family. The pie cube is really, really funny because you can do all these algorithms to the top layer. But because the corners and edges are exactly the same, it doesn't do anything to the cube. Uh, this is a 3x3x2 three by three by pie cube. Finally, the clock. What can I say about the clock? Nothing. Whew, what can I say? Big serving sizes at Le Cube Restaurant. Um, we've got a T carbon fiber windmill cube, um, a T axis cube, a 4x4 four four axis cube which I've never ever scrambled because I will never be able to solve it. It's hard to believe that these are based off regular 3x3 and 4x4s, but they are. If you remove all the pieces, they've got the exact same core as like one of these puzzles. It's crazy. This is a twisty skew and this is a twisty 3x3. When solved, they look so, so interesting. And that's what it looks like when it's solved. It's just, it's really, really cool. Like curved, like it's, it's basically like a 3x3 that got twisted. It's really, really cool. This is a cuboid scoop that just looks like this rectangular cuboid when it's soft, but it's based off a scoop's geometry. This is the Moyu Puppet Cube. Um, puppet because I'm guessing it's got like something on the inside that something on the outside is controlling. There's actually a tiny little three by three inside of this cube. It is crazy to think about. And it is so easy to solve. <laughs> Biggest joke ever. Uh, I literally don't even know a single person, even online, who can solve this cube. One day I might take it apart and maybe put it together again, but otherwise, this is the apparently simpler version of it that I'm not even gonna, I mean like, what even is that? Like, it's crazy. This is the ghost cube, which I accidentally scrambled and yep. It's sort of like the axis cube, but on steroids. And finally, the octahedron. I have heard so many good things about this cube. I've never tried to solve it myself, but one day I might get into it. There's actually a large bunch of people who are really enjoying this puzzle. So yeah, I might get into it one day too. It's colors are just really cool though, and it's shape. It's like a double pyraminx. Yeah, it's really cool. Just some different <laughs> one. Whee! This little ball came as part of a keychain set. It's actually a two by two, as you can see by the way you turn it there, uh, but it's center rotates. And so you can mix it up that way. This is the fancy magic ball that you scramble by replacing um, those little spheres on the inside. It's really cool. This is the Yusin Earth Cube. That is not an accurate depiction of what the Earth actually looks like because it's scrambled. And also because the Earth is flat. And believe it or not, one of these things is not like the others. It's this guy. This is another earthy cube because when you open it, which I can't, there you go, ta-da! I did this in my 19 puzzle unboxing. I had a lot of troubles with just like opening it, but basically they sort of just like peel open in like layers and then you get to like the core of the earth in the very, very center and yeah. And finally, my yeet ball force cubes of which the yellow is missing. It's very, very sad. My kids have been playing with them and I don't blame them, I mean, but yellow is gone, so I only have five. But I can still do stuff like this. Like that. Anyway, yeet! To avoid cross contamination. Oh, by the way. This is a random selection of uh, McDonald's Happy Meal Rubik's 2x2. Two two. The worst 2x2 two two I have ever owned and have ever turned. Uh, a jelly dino cube. So this incredibly pretty shiny cube is very similar to this guy, this twisty three by three, but look, look at the way that it's cut, right? This guy is actually more similar to the mirror blocks, as you can see, because the layers are cut differently, just like this one. Isn't that crazy? And then this, the chameleon cube. Rubix has a version of this now called the impossible cube, but this actually first came out under this like Mensa brand. Uh, and just has like multiple colors, depending on like, the direction in which you hold it. Very hard to solve. And finally, a bunch of flat little cuboids. All of these puzzles are like by one puzzles because they're only like one layer flat. So here's a two by two by one. I love this puzzle just because of its texture. There's something about it that's just really, really cool. And I've got a bunch here of um, two by three by ones. Both of these were by T. This was actually one from a McDonald's Happy Meal. They look a little bit intimidating um, at first glance when you're like, uh-oh. Uh-oh, what am I gonna do now? But solving it is actually, is remarkably simple, in theory. 
Oh, that's right. Another McDonald's Happy Meal puzzle. <laughs> it's like a bit of a snake. You just like bring it together like that. And finally, uh, three by three by one. These guys are really, really fun to solve because you can't even scramble them up very much. If you like pina coladas, these are my fidget spinners, yes. And can I say, these guys have nailed the like weight ratio. Like it balances really, really well. Pretty much all of these like three by three by one um, fidget spinners are just like insanely good. This one in particular, it's like, I feel like you could cut through soft melted butter with this. That's not actually hard to cut through. And then finally here are my, the floppy ghost cubes. They're similar to this, except it, because it has a pentagon in the middle, it's now got like a five axis symmetry with the way that it turns. Sorry. Just some more, just some more. We also have a special edition one. Unboxed. <gasps> Wait, unboxed? You mean boxed? People make a bit of an argument for, you know, 8x8s and 9x9s to make into the WCA as official events, but I can see why they're not in there. They take a long time to solve. I mean, if you're quick, if you're Max Park, you can probably do like an 8x8 in like three minutes, but not the average Joe. Sorry if your name is Joe. I'm sure you're, you're a good cuber, but yeah. So these are the Moyu Meilong series and they make remarkable cubes. By far like my favorite big cube lineup. So the 8x8, the 9x9, the 10x10, which I haven't opened yet, 11x11 and the 12x12. The odd number cube are a little bit nicer because you don't get like weird edge parodies with them uh, that just make it a little bit harder to solve. The 11 by 11 is probably my favorite of the bunch. There's something about it that's just, it's so smooth and so easy to solve. Yusin fairly recently made their 13 by 13. I solved this one in my New Year's uh, live stream from 2020 to 2021. Uh, and yeah, for a 13 by 13, like remarkable. Look how small they are. Like again, this 13 by 13 is only like four pieces smaller than the 17 by 17. But the size difference is like, it's crazy. Is that gonna hold? Probably not. And finally over here, we have the Shanks 9x9. Uh, this much, much smaller brother of the 19 by 19. So same manufacturer. And you can actually see some of the same hallmarks like between these two cubes. I don't understand why this needs to be pillowed uh, when a regular 9 by 9 can look just like that and be flat and so much easier to solve. So love your 19 by 19. Incredible to engineering. 9 by 9, eh. <laughs> the piece de resistance. This was in my significant cubes video because I think as far as big cubes go, this one is very, very special. This is the Moyu 13 by 13. And when this was first released several years ago, like it was a jaw dropping moment. It was like the moment when people realized cubes could get this big. I mean, think about how many stickers are on this thing. Think about the engineering that went into this several years ago. It really was mind blowing. Of course, today in 2020, like this is the 13 by 13 now. So look at the difference between these two. But I love the fact that this is one of my final puzzles tonight because yeah, I really do see this as like a real turning point in cube uh, hardware and engineering. Like, yeah, amazing. That has to be it, right? Oh, it's the fruit. What a fantastic dessert to end on. The fancy fruit cubes, of which there are six. There is the lemon, the banana, the pear, the orange, the peach, and the apple. And they're running away from me. One of my favorite things about these guys is that when you turn it, it actually looks like it's the color of like the flesh on the inside. Some of them are fairly easy to solve, like the pear. It's pretty symmetrical. This piece can be swapped with this piece and it's essentially the same. But some of them are actually quite challenging, like the orange or the peach. You can't really swap pieces around that easily. This is a great dessert. This banana has, yeah, seen better days. Hey, solved it. Woohoo! No, I didn't. Nom, 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 nom. Nom 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 Well, I hope you enjoyed this mouth-watering meal at Le Cube Restaurant. Thank you, Deli Puzzles, for making this insane cube collection possible. And I'll see you next time. Sorry, sir. Did you forget about your mosaic cubes? Mosaic? The ones you do out oh. with. Oh, I don't have too many of them, do I? Eight, 800? 800. Eight hundred. Give or take. Give or take. Okay. Surely, surely you didn't bring. Darkness, my old friend. <laughs> <laughs> well, like at least they're all slabbies and you can like scoop them all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.